Hi everyone, this lecture is going to be on E equals mc squared and the energy released in nuclear reactions. Taking a look at our objectives, we're making good progress. All of the yellow check marks have already been covered so far. Your most recent being identifying fission and fusion reactions. And today we're really going to focus in on objective three, solving problems related to nuclear reactions. And we're going to be using Einstein's mass energy equivalence to convert mass lost in a reaction into energy released. So let's take a look at the warm up problem. There are several parts to this warm up problem. So I'd like for you to pause the video here. You might need to zoom in to see each of these parts better and try each um, number one and number two, A and B. And then unpause to see my answers. Let's zoom in here to problem number one. We are given this reaction. This is a fission reaction, actually the first ever discovered fission reaction, discovered back in the 1930s. That's less than a century ago. So you, as you're studying nuclear and atomic physics, you can just imagine how recent this really is in our history of understanding science. Part A says, explain why this is a fission reaction. The best way to see that this is a fission reaction is to look at what you begin with versus what you end with. You can see we began with uranium-238 and then it split into barium-145 and krypton-94. So we're seeing the splitting action happening and that splitting is an indication of a fission reaction. In part B, we are given the rest mass for each of the particles. Note that this rest mass is in the unit of U. The unit U stands for the atom, or sorry, the unified mass unit. If you've taken chemistry, you know that this is just a fancy unit to measure mass. And this unit is technically defined as 1 12th of a carbon 12 nucleus. You don't really need to know that, just kind of as a fun fact or if you're a chemist. So this U, the unified mass unit, is simply a unit for mass. And you were asked to calculate the total rest mass of the reactants and the total rest mass of the products. I got 239.0598U for the mass of my reactants, and I got 238.927U for the mass of my products. As a side note, although this problem actually gave us the neutron's rest mass, this could also be found in your data booklet on your constants page. So if you look, the rest mass for an electron, a proton, and a neutron are given. And here we're working in atomic, um, or sorry, unified atomic mass units, this 1.00A, 1.007 right here. You'll notice that your unified atomic mass units and their conversions are also listed here. That'll become important later on. So part three is asking us to compare the reactants and the products, the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products. So I'm gonna do a little calculation here. I'm gonna calculate delta M or the change in mass. I'll do my products minus my reactants. And when I do that calculation, I get a delta M, a change in mass of negative 0.1328U. The negative is showing me something that I could already know just looking at my numbers. It's showing me that the mass of my products is less than the mass of my reactants. It appears that mass has magically disappeared. This is weird. I say that this is so weird because so far in your study of chemistry and physics, we have been really used to conservation of mass, where mass cannot magically appear or disappear. What we're seeing here is a violation of conservation of mass, which should make you uncomfortable. 
Let's take a look at part two and see if the same thing is happening. Here we have a fusion reaction. We have hydrogen three, also known as tritium, plus hydrogen three yields hydrogen four plus hydrogen one, hydrogen one. We know that this is a fusion reaction because we can see in our numbers, we're going from small to bigger. We are coming together. We're joining nuclei. This is the signature of fusion reactions. Just as before, I asked you to find the total rest mass of the reactants and the total rest mass of the products. Here we go, I got 6.032 AU for the mass of my reactants and 6.0166U for the mass of my products. So let's do a little comparison. Let's calculate my change in mass by doing my products minus my reactants. And I again get a change in mass that is negative, negative 0.0162U. So again, it appears that mass of the products is less than the mass of the reactants. It appears that mass has been lost and it appears that we have violated the conservation of mass. Okay, so this is weird. We're kind of left wondering where does this missing mass go? So here's going to be our guiding question as we move through the next portion of the lecture. Where does that missing mass go? Well, this is where a very famous equation comes in. I feel like since uh, I was in elementary school, I've kind of heard of this equation and been told that it's Einstein's equation. And the moment has come that you're really going to understand this equation. Delta E equals delta m c squared, okay? You're probably more familiar with just saying e equals m c squared. We really wanna put those deltas in. As physicists, we know that delta is referring to a change in. And what we're gonna see is that where did that missing mass go? We have violated conservation of mass. Well, actually, we need a bigger view of conservation we need conservation of mass energy. And this famous equation from Einstein relates changes in mass to changes in energy. So that mass that looks like it was lost is actually going to be changed into energy. And this is the energy that gets released when we have a nuclear reaction. And thank goodness that fission reactions release energy. After all, that's why we have fission reactions in our power plant. So we can harness that energy and use it. So let's define some variables here. We have delta E. Delta E is the change in energy. We have delta M. This is the change in mass. Remember, we got change in mass by doing the mass of the products minus the mass of the reactants. And then as per usual, C stands for the speed of light, which gets squared. That constant is listed in your data booklet. It's close to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So again, conceptually what's happening, this change in mass, this mass that looks like it was lost. Well, that mass really isn't lost at all. That mass, that nuclear mass that looks like it's missing is converted into energy, energy that we're gonna get from this reaction. Now it's really important at this point that we talk about units, that we talk about units of mass and units of energy and how they play out, because we're gonna have a few options. Now what we're most used to is thinking about energy in terms of joules, capital J, joules. Now in order to use joules, you need to have a mass in kilograms, 
And for C, you're going to use 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay. This, again, is what we've been used to using back in mechanics when we would simply just calculate energy. But you're going to see some different units arising this unit. You're also going to see energy that's being measured in mega electron volts. And this might remind you from before, we have seen electron volts before. This is mega electron volts. We're talking really big orders of magnitude. When you have energy in mega electron volts, you are going to want to work in the mass of mega electron volts per C squared, okay? And in that case, when you have your E equals MC squared, you don't even have to plug in three times 10 to the eighth, you're just gonna use C squared. Because look how nice this is. Our C squareds are going to cancel so that we get mega electron volts on either side. For this reason, I really like working in these units. This is my preferred unit to work in because it's so easy. I don't even have to plug in three times 10 to the eighth. Oh, and I should be specific that we end up squaring that. Okay. So you could have energy in joules is equal to kilograms for mass times three times 10 to the eighth meters per second squared. Or you can have mega electron volts for energy, mega electron volts per C squared for mass, and then you see squared instead of actually plugging in values for the speed of light. The other thing to be aware of is that, ato that unified atomic mass unit U, this is another unit of mass, and there are conversions to get to mega electron volts per C squared or to get to kilograms. Let's take a look at the conversions we are given. So again, in your data booklet on the constants page, the fundamental constants, this unified atomic mass unit U and what follows are gonna be all of your conversions. So you know that one U is equal to 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. One U is equal to 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared. And you know 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms is equal to 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared. So you really have all of your mass conversions right here. And when you come back to look at electron, proton, and neutron rest masses, you see that those rest masses are given in kilograms, in unified atomic mass units, and in mega electron volts per C squared. Again, all units for mass. So again, be very careful. Energy comes in joules and mega electron volts. Mass comes in kilograms, mega electron volts per C squared, and U. And speed of light could be three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, all squared, or you could just use C squared. But again, we're kind of reading this as going across. So joules, kilograms, and three times 10 to the eighth match, mega electron volts and mega electron volts per C squared, and C squared match. So to kind of come back to the big idea here, conservation of mass energy, what's really going on is that mass and energy together must be conserved. So we have the mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products plus the amount of energy that's being released. And really I just solved E equals MC squared for mass so that we can really see where did that missing mass go Oh, it went to the energy released. And you should be aware that there are also reactions that require energy, that the energy is actually absorbed. It might look like this. And this is the energy that's required for the reaction. It uses up this energy, it absorbs this energy. Again, same idea that in the end, mass energy together show conservation. But if you look at mass individually, 
or even energy individually, it looks like individuals are not conserved. Okay, let's try a few examples together. Our first example together asks us to calculate the energy in joules released in the decay of a neutron, decaying to a proton and electron. Little teaser here, this is a really cool decay. We're gonna look at this particular decay towards the end of the unit. This is not really an example of fission or fusion, but a little teaser of what's to come. We are given the mass, the rest mass of a neutron, a proton, an electron. If we did not have that in the problem, we could come over to our data booklet and find that information here. So let's start by finding the mass of my reactants, the mass of my products, and the change in mass. Here we go. I'm getting a change in mass that is very, very small. And notice because we're dealing with really small numbers, I try not to round until the very, very end. And even then I'm really recording a lot of decimal places. Now this delta M came out in our unified atomic mass units, U, but I'm noticing that we're asked to calculate energy in joules. And so I know if my energy is in joules, then I'm really looking for my mass to be in kilograms. And then for my speed of light, I'm going to use the actual value 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And of course, I'll square that. Okay. So we have a little bit of converting to do. We need to convert my atomic mass units into kilograms. Let's head back to the data booklet to find that conversion. I'm seeing that one unified atomic mass unit is equal to 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. So I'm going to take that delta M, make some more room for myself, and multiply by this conversion, 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. Notice I'm multiplying so that my U's cancel on the top and bottom, so I'm left with just kilograms. And that comes out to be negative 1.3943 times 10 to the negative 30th kilograms. Again, really, really small numbers here. Don't be weirded out by this negative. That negative simply means that we have lost mass from reactants to products, meaning that lost mass must be going to energy that's being released. And I'm really happy to see that because in our problem, we were told the energy was going to be released. Okay, let me make some room here. So we have found our change in mass, and now we're going to use that change in mass in our delta E equals delta MC squared equation. We're looking for delta E, the amount of energy being released from this apparent mass that's lost. I'll use that delta M. Here I'm going to drop the negative sign because all that negative is doing is telling me that the energy will be released. And I'll use C squared using the actual values here. Again, reminder of units. We want energy to come out in joules, so we're using mass in kilograms, and we're using the actual value for the speed of light in meters per second squared. A kilogram meter squared per second squared is a joule, so we're in good shape. And calculating this out, we get 1.25 times 10 to the negative 13th joules being released. Now you're probably wondering why we're working with such small values. Well, remember that usually we don't have reactions that involve just one reaction. We're having lots of reactions. So you can imagine that small amounts of energy being released will actually build up to be a large amount. Let's take a look at one more example together before your gear up problem. This reaction actually is the nuclear reaction that produces the sun's energy. Okay, so we're given the rest masses and we are asked to calculate the amount of energy this time in mega electron volts. And we're told that this energy is gonna be released. I sure hope it is because we receive energy from the sun. So it makes sense that our sun is releasing energy in its fusion reaction. OK, 
Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is find the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products, as well as the change in mass. And from those um, calculations, I find that the change in mass is indeed negative, that negative indicating that it looks like mass is lost, but really that lost mass is just being converted into energy that's being released, just like we would expect from this problem. Now to get a game plan going, because we're asked for energy in terms of mega electron volts, we are going to want a mass that's in mega electron volts per C squared, and that will allow us for the speed of light squared just to plug C squared in because it'll cancel with our units. So let's take this change in mass and we need to multiply it by a conversion between U and mega electron volts per C squared. Let me head over to my data booklet to look for that conversion. 1U is equal to 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared. Again, I'm multiplying by that um, factor so that my U's will cancel. And this gives me a change in mass of negative 23.6601 mega electron volts per C squared. Let me shrink this down and make some room for the second part of our answer. We're going to come over and apply delta E equals delta MC squared. We're looking for delta E. We're going to use our M 23.6601 that's coming in mega electron volts per C squared. We're looking for mega electron volts for our energy. So in order to get there, you simply need to leave it as C squared. And what happens is that C squared cancels with our units and out pops our energy, 23.6601 mega electron volts. And this is why these are my favorite units to work in. How easy was that? We didn't even need a calculator for the second part over here. So that means the energy being released in one of these reactions, one sun reaction, is 23.6601 mega electron volts. Excellent. So let's try a few gear up problems here. I have two gear up problems for you. That should say number two, not number three. Go ahead and pause the video. You might need to do some zooming in in order to see it. Pause the video and try these and unpause to check your answers. And taking a look at the solutions to this gear up problem, notice that I skipped a little step and I kind of combined when I was calculating delta mass. I did my products in this bra bracket minus my reactants in this bracket, just a little bit less writing. I converted over to kilograms here, and I needed kilograms because in order to get joules out, I use a mass in kilograms and three times 10 to the eighth meters per second for my speed of light, of course, squared. So I got an answer of 1.08-ish times 10 to the negative 11th joules. This is going to be energy that is released I know that because my delta M was negative, so it looked like mass was lost. That lost mass was actually turned into released energy. And checking question number two. Again, kind of combining the products minus the reactants to get my change in mass. Here, converting to mega electron volts per C squared for my mass. That's because I want my product to be, um, my energy to be in mega electron volts. And I just use C squared. I didn't even have to plug in any more values there. This energy is a bit different than the examples we've seen so far. This energy would be required. It would be used up during the reaction. And you know that because delta M came out to be positive in this case. And positive change in mass means that mass was gained in this reaction. Well, where did that mass come from? It really came from using up energy. So this reaction required energy. 
So to recap really what we learned today, we focused on using Einstein's mass energy equivalence to convert mass lost or gained in a reaction to energy released or used in a reaction. You notice that the majority of our examples were with lost energy and with energy release. That's because what you really see in fission and fusion is mass that appears to be lost that's turned into energy released. And we learned the very famous equation here, delta E equals delta mc squared. Make sure you're being nice and careful with those units and conversions. Happy practicing!